here at ETH Denver and I'm standing here with David Gold from FIO, which is uh, the foundation of interwallet operability. And uh, your project is a really fascinating one because it's a game changer to the industry. So can you describe it a little bit, how it's going to help wallets interact and interoperate with each other? Yeah, so the uh, FIO protocol is going to make uh, blockchain so easy that your web surfing grandma could use it. And it's doing that by working with the industry. We already have eight major wallets and exchanges that are partnering with us. And FIO itself, the foundation, is a nonprofit consortium that's run by the industry. The FIO protocol will enable uh, users to send and receive decentralized value without ever having to worry about public addresses uh, and in manners such as requests for payments that virtually eliminate the possibility of errors in a transaction, which are a huge issue today. Uh, most people who have sent any amount of crypto to another wallet that's not theirs have experienced problems with public addresses. Uh, and it includes a layer of metadata, so information about the transaction, notes, order carts, uh, invoices, etc., that go along with those. And it works across every single token or coin identically and immediately without those blockchains having to change or fork. And it can be integrated with every single wallet uh, exchange and crypto payment processor out there. Wow. So it, to, to paint the picture, it's going to help um, wallets interoperate different wallets with different cryptocurrencies, can exchange funds, but also it provides a naming mechanism, right, that um, you don't have to expose your public key. You can use a name that maps to that. So can you describe that a little bit? Yeah, so the, the three initial capabilities that the FIO protocol will go live with are FIO addresses, FIO workflow, and FIO data. And FIO addresses are human-readable addresses that work identically across every token or coin. There are things like ENS out there, um, which, number one, aren't actually easy to use. They're very complicated. And number two, they only work on Ethereum. That'll never work in a world where you have more than one blockchain because users want something simple they can understand that works the same across everything. So a few addresses work across every chain immediately without those chains having to fork or change in, in any way. And, and the FIO protocol, it's important to understand, is an inner wallet operability protocol. It's a protocol and a standard that wallets and crypto payment processors uh, integrate. It, the blockchains don't integrate it. It is not a blockchain interoperability protocol. Those are other projects that are doing that. This is completely complementary with those. And in fact, I would suggest one plus one equals three because they enable the cross-chain trading of tokens. And FIO enables a user experience that is very easy for the web surfing person to understand and to interact with. Great. So your solution is not a wallet itself, but it's a solution that's integrated into multiple other wallets that helps them uh, interoperate with each other. So you've had some good adoption so far. Can you mention some of the, the wallets out there that are using your technology? Yeah, so you can uh, go to the website FIO.Foundation to get the current and updated list because it's changing all the time as we're adding new uh, FIO members. But uh, currently uh, the FIO members as of today include a Binance's Trust Wallet, Shapeshift, Keep Key, Mycelium, BRD, uh, Edge Wallet, MyCrypto. Uh, so it's a big list. And then there's a, another list of, that's also very long of small or startup and affiliate members that's on the website. They have all jumped on board to back the FIO protocol and have the intent to integrate the FIO protocol into their into their offerings to make this sort of functionality available. FIO does not make wallets or exchanges or crypto payment processors. It's a standard and a protocol that enables them to all be better and provide a better solution. And FIO does not compete with any other blockchain. It's a service layer that sits alongside all other blockchains and makes all those other blockchains better. All right, so if I understand you correctly, you have a component that gets integrated into uh, um, the, the wallets, and I presume is that open source? or? Yeah, so uh, the FIO protocol will be open source at the launch of the mainnet. We will open source the entire blockchain. All the SDKs and the API access will all be open sourced at launch of the mainnet. It's not open source right now while we're in alpha testing, but at launch of the mainnet, which is expected uh, towards the end of this year, uh, that will all be open sourced. Mm -hmm. And by mainnet, you mean your own private mainnet, is that correct? Yeah, so the FIO protocol is its own delegated proof-of-stake blockchain. Uh, the, the specific capabilities that the FIO protocol needs actually aren't met by any single chain out there. 
Um, so it's, it, it needs to be its own chain. It also needs to be its own chain because of the economics behind it. If it was running on top of another chain where there were fees associated with that chain, it, it, it would be, have a challenging time working. Um, and, and then it also needs to be its own chain because this is an industry consortium and an industry protocol. It's not intended to be an open use platform like Ethereum or EOS, which are intended to be you know cloud computing resources to build your dApp or your smart contract. FIO is not that. Um, it's actually con uh, locked down so that really the industry has control over deciding what capabilities get added in the future. Very interesting. So FIO then is um, a standards body um, that, that is providing this interoperability, but you are also providing the solution itself as a service, right? Is there a, a separation between the two, or, or are you going to be a standards body with the service, or uh, can you explain that? Yeah, so it is a decentralized model. There you know, are uh, 21 primary, 21 backup uh, no block producing nodes on the FIO blockchain when it goes live. Uh, those nodes are voted in by uh, essentially through the, the token votes. The way that the system is structured, a lot of those token votes will be wallets, exchanges, and crypto payment processors, but not all of them. Um, the nodes on the blockchain ultimately do are the ones who have the final say over, for example, adding a new smart contract, adding any new software code. Those nodes have to two-thirds plus one vote it in. The foundation's role is a nonprofit to fund and advance development of the protocol. The foundation will have a lot of resources uh, financially based on how this is built to fund projects internally and externally to enhance the protocol to create awareness and education, to continue to add to the SDK uh, and API suite, uh, and to provide knowledge sources for the community. So the foundation's role is advance the protocol, education, communication. Decisions about governance of the protocol are just like any other blockchain. It's done by the blockchain and by the block producing nodes that are elected by the token holders. Fantastic. So um, how can somebody find you and, and get involved, or how can developers start working with this technology? Yeah, thank you. So the latest information is at FIO.Foundation. Um, on Twitter, it's uh, at uh, JoinFIO. Um, so you can get information in both of those sources. Uh, and uh, all the latest is up there. So right now, uh, wallets, exchanges, crypto payment processors, um, as of today, uh, sitting here uh, in February of 2019, are reaching out to us to get information, which we're sharing about becoming FIO members, getting involved in in the information flow on the protocol so they can start to think about integrating it. Developers, uh, really, it's going to be later this year, we'll, we'll broaden the net uh, and, and we'll have developers getting involved. We are actually going to start in about a month or two to create a technical advisory group of sort of uh, a smaller group of top-notch developers that are interested in this. Um, it'll be sort of a semi-invite uh, group that we'll create. But later this year, developers will be able to get at all the open source stuff by end of Q3 or Q4 is the plan, uh, and really start looking at all the code base. Fantastic. Well, thanks for coming to ETH Denver. And how do you enjoy the conference so far? Have you had some good inter inter interactions with hackers? Oh, it's a great conference. I have my second one. I was here last year for the inaugural one. And uh, yeah, anybody who wants to come to a great Ethereum hackathon, this has got to be one of the best, if not the best. So absolutely. Great. Well, thanks. thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks.